All right, let's talk about everyone's favorite conversation topic, medications. Let's talk about GI medications. So let's start with medications that help to start you pooping. Um, so there's different types of laxatives. Um, so the different, some of the major classes that we talk about are what are known as saline laxatives, um, what like magnesium citrate, um, milk of magnesia, I think they all have mag in them. So, um, you know, I, what I have here is mag causes your kidney function to drag. So you always want to check a patient's kidney function before um, given a saline laxative. Um, there's also hyperosmotic laxatives like Miralax, like lax is laxative um, or go lightly. And you know that we talked about this in class, but there's nothing light about it. And the only place I'm going to is the bathroom after taking that medication. Um, so maybe uh, we could, um, with the hyperosmotic, remember hyperosmotic, go lightly, like you are going to be hyperly going to the bathroom. <laughs> um, stimulant laxatives like uh, bisicodal, um, it's, all, it's all up in my business. It's um, a suppository. Um, so you can maybe think of it that way. Uh, and then bulk forming laxatives like um, xylem fiber, like metamucil, things like that. Um, so I will do the trick to make things thick. So maybe that's one way to remember it. Keep in mind, um, you know, there's obviously other medications that will help you poop um, and other things that we talk about. There's enemas and things like that as well. Um, but these are some really common ones that you're going to see in the hospital given. Um, there's also medications to help you stop pooping. So on the other end, so there's bismuth subsaculate, Pepto-Bismol, and that's, um, so I have bis-sub will help stop the pooping club. <laughs> yeah, I had to work hard on that one. It was hard to find something to rhyme with that. Um, and so uh, this is the best I can do, so don't judge. Um, we can also give probiotics. We can give loperamide or emodium. So a loperamide will help the stool too high. And um, diphenoxalate with atropine or lamotyl diphenoxalate will set your diarrhea straight. Ah, uh, you like it? And then if there's an infectious process going on, we can give antibiotics. And there's also medications to help stop vomiting or being nauseous. So on Dancitron or Zofran is the most common uh, medication given in the hospital. Dan will set a nausea ban. Ah, uh, pretty good stuff, right? Um, and um, promethazine, there's no nausea vomiting at the prom. So yes, yeah, so think about, you know, your bad, good experiences at the prom where, you know, maybe someone spiked the punch and um, you might have needed some promethazine. So yes, um, afterward. Um, and so um, definitely um, some things to keep in mind with promethazine is even, it's a little, it's a lot stronger than that on Dancitron. Um, we want to worry about extravasation. So if it goes into the tissue, it can be very damaging to the tissue. And the big thing is safety. It can make you dizzy and drowsy, all the Ds. Dizzy, drowsy, drunk at the prom. So um, medications that help with reflux. So there's a variety of them. Let's talk about first medications that help to decrease the amount of acid. So there's proton pump inhibitors and H2 receptor agonists. So prozole will decrease your acid toll and FAM decreases acid like bam. <laughs> Again, I do the best I can with what I'm given. Um, and so, um, you know, as a whole, remember the medications that decrease the amount of acid, these are medications taken daily, usually in the morning before meals, um, to help to decrease your acid as a whole. Um, so they're going to help kind of keep things stable so that you don't have as much acid for things like peptic ulcer disease, GERD, gastritis, that kind of stuff. Um, then there's also medications that treat, actively treat, remember, so think more of like proton pump inhibitors, H2 receptor agonists, those are our preventative than to actually treat acid that's already there and buffer it, we can give antacid. So think all the electrolyte names, the ums, nums, and mums. So aluminum, calcium, um, those, all those medic kind of medications. Um, something to keep in mind with antacids is we do not want to take them with other medicines. They bind and they um, mess with absorption of other medicines. They're going to change the pH of your stomach. So you're not going to be able to process those medications the way you're supposed to. So always take antacids by themselves. We want to take them one to three hours after our meal. So remember to decrease acid, amount of acid in general to prevent acid um, buildup, we want to take the PPI or the H2 receptor agonist um, first thing in the morning before meals. Then we want to take our medications to treat and buffer acid after our meals. 
We can also give medications to coat the stomach like scarafate. Um, and uh, you know, that's gonna help to literally coat the stomach. Um, we give this right before they eat a meal so that it can help to coat that stomach from that acid. Um, we can also give medications to get things moving like metoclopramide, um, which is Reglin. But we need to be careful with this because it is a vesicant um, when given IV. There's also medications that help to decrease pancreatitis. Think, um, and this is gonna be with chronic pancreatitis because with acute pancreatitis, we have too many enzymes. So we do not wanna give this with acute pancreatitis, but for chronic pancreatitis, we wanna give pancreatic enzymes because that pancreas has gotten fibrotic and it can't produce enzymes the way that it's supposed to. So um, they are going to need to replace some of those that they're missing so that we actually can break down foods. So the thing is, is that we're giving enzymes to help break down food. So when do we need to take it? We need to take it with food. In other words, like, you know, usually when I eat a meal, my pancreas secretes enzymes with um, when I secrete that meal to break it down. Well, if I'm not making those enzymes and I need some like, you know, from outside my body, cause I'm not making them, then I need to give this with food. So it's actually doing its job. If I give pancreatic enzymes on an empty stomach, there's nothing that they can do for me because there's no food for them to break down. So you always need to take them with food. Let's talk about medications for Crohn's um, or ulcerative colitis. So there's five ASA, which are, um, uh, you can think of ASA as all swelling absent. So these are anti-inflammatories. Most of these are given as foam or enemas. So they're most often used for ulcerative colitis, but there are other ways that they also can be given for Crohn's disease as well. Um, these patients also usually receive steroids, which decrease the immune response. A steroid will make your immune system void. So I always want to teach these patients about um, how to take care of their hygiene, aseptic technique, how to prevent infection, avoid crowds, hand washing, all that stuff. And then steroids can also increase your blood glucose. So you want to uh, be monitoring that closely and, uh, for that hyperglycemia. Um, immunosuppressants can always be given. These are just medications that just simply decrease immune response. And it's just in the name. So I don't have something funny or cute to um, help you remember it. Um, but again, same stuff, making sure to prevent infection, um, be looking for signs of infection and not be around people, places, or things that are going to increase that risk. There's also what are known as biological agents. So think of these as they try to change the way your body's reacting. Because you know, with Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, both of them are immune associated diseases. Um, so in other words, there's something wrong with the immune system. It's overreacting or it's not responding the way that it's supposed to. So the biological agents try to change that reaction or decrease that reaction. They change the biology of your body's responses. But again, a lot of these can also cause a decreased immune system. So um, we wanna be looking out for those same things and give that same teaching. So this may seem like a lot of meds, but as a whole, all of these are going to decrease your immune response. Um, and uh, we caught a, so we want to really um, teach the patient all that stuff to help to um, prevent them from having infection. Let's talk about pernicious anemia. What helps? Well, if I have pernicious anemia, I'm not making intrinsic factor, which means I don't have the key that I need to let vitamin B12 into my cell. So what am I going to need the rest of my life? I need vitamin B12 shots. So they can be given IM or IV, usually given IM um, for the rest of their life to help to replenish that so that they do not have anemia. Um, so this is something if a patient has had gastric bypass or a gastrectomy, or if they even have just had chronic damage from peptic ulcer disease or gastritis, um, they may end up needing vitamin B12 shots for life. There's also medications to help treat H. pylori. So that we talked about the triple, theory, ther ah, triple therapy or quadruple therapy. The triple therapy um, contains a proton pump inhibitor, amoxicillin, and clarithromycin. Um, quadruple therapy, there's five choices here. Now you're going to say, you said quadruple, that's four. But um, keep in mind, there is a bismuth and a non-bismuth um, option for these. It's in your book, but just keep in mind, like here's like five options and then um, four of these are chosen. So they're always going to get the PPI. They may or may not get the bismuth. Um, and then they're going to get the clarithromycin, maybe the tetracycline or the metronazole, just depending um, on uh, what, you call their, um, what you call particular resistance and how they respond to those therapies. So yeah, so those are your medications as a whole. Start breaking down what goes with what. 
I know that medications can be hard and it's always challenging to kind of be like, ah, what do I need to know about meds? But you know, there's a lot of meds here, but just start to try to connect them to like, you know, imagine going into the room, administering these, when are you going to give it? What are you going to need to teach the patient? Um, how are you going to help? Um, uh, we caught, uh, how are you going to continue to help for them to be safe and be able to help support them um, in this medication? What are you going to expect to see? to know that it's working and what are you gonna see if there's a problem with the medication? So I hope that this started to help get you started in learning these medications. Talk to you later.